The Late Show Graham Podcast with Jim Richards is on the iHeartRadio app. I did all sorts of great things today, and this is why people around the office still... Am I the only one that puts my mask on my arm through the hoops? Like when I'm not wearing it, I just... And so I would, sometimes I'm like... Hours later, I was like, what the hell's on my arm? I just noticed that was on my arm. Anyway, I should have been, I should have checked my arms before I, I usually do check my arms before I go on the radio. Like your mom or dad would say, wear clean underwear to make sure that, you know, do that, check that every day. My boss always says, before you go on the air, on the air check your arms. We don't want you going on and on about nothing important about what's on your arms. Can we go back to the beginning of the show? Because now I forget what I... I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, who cares, is basically the whole show. Four hours of me and you guys going, who cares? And that's why there's a love affair. I'm Jim Richards. It's the Late Showgram with Jim Richards on the iHeartRadio Talk Network. Tony, is there any way we can re-roll or you're taping the show for later for the West Coast? You can't go back and listen to what the hell because I would be able to remember what I was going to say. A lot of this should be written down. At least some talking points to give me an idea of where I wanted to go. But we're, you can't do that, can you? You can't go back to find out what the hell I was saying at the beginning. It's only the first 15 seconds before I noticed that there was something on my arm. I can rewind my brain and say that you were talking about something on your arm like the mask no 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 no, no, no. before i said that before that before that even before that i was sleeping just before that you can't re-roll you can't re-roll i no no it's not that easy uh it's not no record scratching here oh i remember what i was gonna say uh i'm famous around the radio station for doing one thing and it's like asking the producer by the way can you get like every song ever recorded and make sure that it's handy by the time we go on the air and i'll ask for that like two seconds before we go on the radio and then i used to be outraged that it wasn't done and finally edited but i did ask tony for that a little bit later on for a segment called and i think it's a genius segment called don't be chris hansen uh where you have to we'll explain it a little bit later on uh we're own yeah i because the more i say it out loud it sounds i don't know is there any uh, don't tell people what it is uh tony but do you think it's creepy at all don't be uh chris hansen uh, I think it's a great segment, which is why uh, we did all the work for. Uh, uh, you better it together. Uh, because yeah. well, how would it's you feel like I'm segment. like, oh, maybe we should cancel it maybe because somebody should. might be upset. <laughs> <laughs> After you've done two hours work, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> somebody might get mad because there's somebody. Basically, you have to. Call, you have <laughs> You have to guess uh, and make sure that the song that we're playing is over 18 years of age. Uh, Don't Be Chris Hansen is the name of the segment. We'll do it a little bit later on. And uh, I, I also have a new segment that I love where we read text messages that clearly people were thought that we were texting somebody else. It's called intexticated uh but you call you text all the time you guys text us all the time thinking you're texting your mom or your girlfriend or uh somebody and i'm pretty sure you're intexticated when you're texting the radio station instead of a loved one or a friend or who the hell knows a drug deal gone sideways we will read those we've scoured our inbox at 7 10 10 and we will read are you intexticated a little bit later on and i I might open an email saying that says uh, a sad day. <laughs> I forget what's in the email. I emailed it to myself. Um, and uh, it's things that I'm mad about because it's very sad things going on in the news. Maybe in an hour, I'll open my email called it's a sad day uh, later on on the show. By the way, um no i'll save that story i'll tell you a story of me right now yesterday we tried to determine uh and we had a couple of great calls i was not very good at prioritizing what is important and what is important to me is you guys the listeners and the phone calls that we get way too many of 
quite frankly, we can't handle. Are you, uh, is the overload phone bank uh, set up, Tony? I know there are other operators standing by. There's you, and then there's a room, and it looks like a telethon where there are hundreds, and eh, maybe not hundreds, but about 20 people standing by in the phone bank room right adjacent to where Tony is. They take the overflow of phone calls because we get so many of them. How are those people doing today? Did they oh, they're just pizza? real busy. All the interns are uh, are there. They're really busy going crazy on the phones right now, trying to uh, trying to screen all these calls that you're getting. Uh, yeah, well, I, we had to order them pizza, Jim. I'll, I'll send you the bill in a bit. Oh, please do. Um, so we do have uh, people standing by. Uh, at like least yesterday. 23 of them, yeah. 23. Oh, wow. There's usually 24 seats, so there's one missing tonight. Um, yesterday we did a topic. I neglected. I mean, I was not very good at prior prior twicing. Yes. Uh, The time that would be allotted for the topic and was called, what's uh, a little broken around your house? I don't know. Maybe the hinge on your dishwasher. Uh, I gave the example of this dishwasher my friend has and the door keeps opening and give, I mean, that dog's got to have got a concussion by now, but just little things around your house that are broken, but not broken enough where you're like, oh, I got to get a repair guy in here or I need to get a brand new dishwasher that sort of thing so i thought i was thinking today and while i was thinking i was thinking to myself certain things that i thought sounded familiar and it's because i was channeling an old comedy bit by brian regan i think where he talked about uh, how lazy people are when it comes to like if i had something wrong with my jaw i would go to the doctor because i couldn't eat If I couldn't hear, I don't know, would I go? If I couldn't hear, would I go to the doctor? Maybe it's the same as seeing. But if if your arm was broken or any number of different things, you might go to the doctor and make sure you don't need a hearing aid or any number of different things. But if you wear glasses all the time, the last thing you do, I hate going to the eye doctor. I really do. Uh, But it's not like seeing isn't a priority. Like seeing isn't a priority. Like of all the things that you need to do, if you have sight, uh, that that's not a priority to keep up on. uh, To me, it's like I always let it slide. Uh, But again, if I had to eat or if I had to move my legs, if it was something like that, I would probably go to the doctor and get whatever that was fixed. But I don't know. Like I'm too busy to see properly. Um, I don't know, like if it's eating, smelling, hearing, probably I would go to a doctor for the eye test. It's not a quiz. It'd be funny if it was like a take home assignment that you could do. Yeah, do this overnight. It's a take home assignment, but it's not a quiz. It's a test. And I don't know about you. I get performance anxiety whenever I remember in high school. I would knew, know all the stuff, but I would just like have uh, not necessarily. Maybe I was having panic attacks before I knew what they even were. But just for an eye exam, I would uh, get a little bit of anxiety. And I would also uh, I would because I would be afraid that the eye doctor guy would get mad at me. And I didn't want to fail because you know what happens when you fail. You don't get to advance and see some things the next year with all of your friends. <laughs> uh, actually, what would happen if you did fail? You'd just end up looking like, I don't know, bubbles or something like that. That's who you would look like from the trailer park, boys. So, uh, and there's no summer school where you can make that up. Oh, that's so funny. Um, but honestly, I would get anxiety about it. Is it better now? Or is it better now? Is it better now or is it better now? I don't know. It looks the same to me. Is it better now or is it better now? I can't see a difference. And then the guy would also get a little mad because he's like, well, it doesn't make any sense because you should see a difference between here or at least this one. Is it better now or better there now? I don't know. And then I would read the line because I'm dyslexic. He would go, oh, oh, we have a bit of a problem. Or I would look at a bunch of like C, Z, Y, N, Q's. I don't know. That looks like my friend who's Ukrainian. That's what looks like their name. A bunch of, I'm not making fun of anybody name, anybody's name, but it just looks like a whole bunch of consonants from my uh, Yugoslavian friend or my Croatian friend. I'm going to get in trouble for that. But that's why I, I, I don't like going to the eye doctor. But it is a priority that you need to see. So if there was something broken on me, that's what I thought my topic would be. What's like actually a little broken on you right now? Like on your body. 
not around your house yesterday we did around your house but what maybe on you is a little broken 1-855-633-1010 1-855 on your own human self what might be a little broken on you that next on the late night showgram Now back to the Late Showgram with Jim Richards on the iHeartRadio Talk Network. All right, I think this could be a lot of fun. We're asking what's broken on you, like something that, I don't know, maybe, like I know if I uh, I didn't get proper uh, physio on my arm when I broke my arm when I was hit by a car when I was on my bike and I got doored. And so I can only, uh, I'm lazy, I didn't go for the, all the physio, so I uh, can only, for a while, I could only lift my arm to about shoulder length and then i went to physio and it took a little longer because i didn't act right away and i should have acted right away but that would have been broken on me so we're asking you what is a little broken on you we did the segment yesterday about what might be a little broken around your house and what like anyway if I, i'm not going to over explain it we're just going to go to the phones because of the the sheer volume of phone calls that we we're going to get 1-855-633-1010 1-855-633-1010 folks you're allowed to when i say that we're going to get a lot of phone calls you are allowed to dream and when i say a lot of phone calls i mean dream big we have about 23 interns in a separate uh phone room uh the overload room for the phone calls let's go to our friend alan he's in ottawa we're asking uh what's a little broken on you and alan it says here on the call screener oh i've got a lot of that so well give me the list the grocery list of things that are a little broken on you well let's start with that you're fat. I'm fat, too. Yep. Well, compared to what I used to be. How many pounds overweight are you? I'd say about 30. Uh, I'm probably about 20 or 15, but... Uh, but okay, so you let's... know, at one time, I dropped 100 pounds in six months. I exercised from morning until night and dropped 100 pounds in six months. Good for you. That's pretty impressive. All right, what else is I... broken on you? How long do you have? Just go quick. Grocery list. (laughs) Eyes, uh, age. Eyes? Yep. Yep. I had to get uh, um, 3.75 glasses today. New glasses? Reading glasses? Yep. 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 Uh, My feet hurt. Where do your feet hurt from? Oh, bad shoes, I guess. Bad shoes? You need a massage or something like that? Oh, that would be kind if you get it. Uh, yeah, I, I ain't driving to Ottawa, but I would do that yeah. if I. I'm not. I'm lying to you. I wouldn't do that if I was in Ottawa. But okay, your feet hurt. Your uh, what about your back? How's your back doing? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, my back goes uh, sometimes, but ever since I got you out know, of bed, I've got, I've got a dog, and this is why. Oh, uh, good. My I'm back glad. Doesn't hurt because okay. I walk them all the time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I just realized that <laughs> what is broken on you. Uh, I should have focus grouped it a little bit better. I didn't mean, I don't mean this bad against myself or Alan, both of us old men. Um, I think, I don't know how old Alan is, but I'm at least over 35. I'll give you that. Um, That maybe this is what's broken on you. Uh, Tony, do you think this topic skews old? I'm not sure if it does. I think maybe I should have, uh, not that that's a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying it does. Uh, And uh, I don't want... If you, we, we had one guy call who said, uh, I got to need, I need about a half an hour to go through the list of things. Scott, what hurt, what is, bro, what's broke on you? I broke my foot about a month and a half ago. And when I went to the emergency room, I wouldn't let them put it into a cast because I ride motorcycles. So it is getting a little bit better, but it is still oh, man. a little broke. <laughs> how you know? How do you know that it's not going to heal properly? Uh, that, I don't know for sure, but I feel that it's healing uh, because it does feel a lot better. Yeah. I don't limp on it as much anymore. 
I'm very happy with my decision not okay. to let them put it into a cast. The summer and of motorcycles. I don't have time for that. I'm yeah, I get busy. it. Motorcycling in the summertime, you, you'd miss a whole season, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know what? You, you, you're like an athlete who doesn't want to have the surgery during the season, but you'll have the <laughs> surgery in the off season. That's what, if you need it. Hopefully you don't need it, but if you need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then there's the people like Scotty Pippen, man. He really pissed off Michael Jordan when he decided to go the whole summer, not have the surgery, and then when training camp started and the season was starting, he was like, oh, I'm going to get my surgery now. Man, Michael Jordan was so pissed at that guy. So we're not, um, we're not tuckling, tuckling. We're not talking about actually broken. We're kind of like saying like, hey, what's not working on you right now? What do you have to, like, what's your workaround thing? I, um, you know, you'll always like, man, my leg hurts uh, a little bit. I'll walk it off, and if it still hurts in about a week, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll go to the doctor, or maybe I'll still limp around, or that sort of thing. Is there something on you that is not working, not actually physically broken? I'm not saying that the previous callers didn't understand the question. What I am saying is maybe I didn't do a very good job in communicating it. However, I'm just over-explaining things, and it's really annoying. Uh, my point is that uh both the two previous callers were fantastic here's etchna etchna is in montreal etchna did i say your name properly yes i am nichmus remember me oh Nichmus. yes yes how are you yes oh i'm so happy to speak with you you sent You're me an boy. email moments ago welcoming me back i've been here all week oh i'm sorry it's because uh, remember you ask what is broken yes, with you? Yeah. Yes. And um, remember I told you my mother had uh, advanced breast cancer? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Yes, I sent you an email and I said that I don't know if you read. But, I uh, did read. Did I reply? No, you didn't. Oh, but it's okay. You no, it's are not a okay. celebrity, not me. I am not a so celebrity. It makes but sense. I'm not a celebrity. Um, yes, you are. No, 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 no. I am not a celebrity. Uh, okay, I am. Yes. No, I'm. No, but how's your mom doing? How's your mom doing? She passed away. It's, oh, yeah. Jeez. Very depressing. I'm so sorry. It's true. Well, I wouldn't think it, that you would it, lie to me, but yeah, no, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So I feel terrible now. Broken. Honestly, I know you didn't call me up to make me feel terrible, but I feel terrible that I never got back to you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I never replied to you. Um, no, how long okay. ago did she like, pass away? I, our, I write you almost every day. I am your stalker on the radio. Radio stalker. All right. Okay. Yes. So, w is there anything that right now on you is not like working perfectly? Uh, well, my mother died, so I don't feel this like the same person. Yeah. You know, it's very hard. Like, sometimes, like, I just want to cry so much because it's, it hit my, it hit me like a bus, you know? How old are you? Like, me? Yeah. I am 56, but because I'm black, like, you would never, you know, you cannot tell. Yeah, no, I don't you mean it. I don't it mean is. it that way. I just mean uh, so you were very close to your mom, and uh, the younger somebody might be it might have more of a powerful effect on them, but it still has a powerful effect on you, uh, even though you're similar to my age. I mean, all of that. I, I don't mean to minimize it at all. That's not what I meant to. to my that was not it's, my point. It's very no. I was not close to her. Well, lately she was much nicer to me than yeah. when I was a kid. When she was a kid, she wasn't very loving towards me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I have complicated grief. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sure. uh, like when she was very sick, I thought I wouldn't care if she passed away. But when she did, it was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Because the worst part of when someone dies is you will never see them again. And you feel still. What, sorry, when did she pass away? Friday morning. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm so sorry for not uh, replying. Uh, my thoughts Don't are with worry you. About you're, come on, you're the celebrity, you know? I'm not a celebrity, I, okay? Uh, <laughs> not that I'm mad I, at you. I'm not mad at you, but I, I, I do get so much email, uh, and sometimes I forget to reply. So 
Listen, I really appreciate your phone call. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Have a good Chris, show. You, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Um, n- uh, we do appreciate that phone call. And uh, not exactly how I thought it was going to go. I thought it would be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I broke my thumb and now my thumb is this or that. You know, just hilarious stories like that. Um, but uh, all the best to her. And a-, a lot of people going through things like that almost each and every day. Okay. Uh, it is the late night show, Graham. Oh boy, did I get a phone call this morning on I play you before this hour is out. I'm Jim Richards, and this is the Nighttime Friendly. You're listening to the Late Show, Graham, with Jim Richards on the iHeartRadio Talk Network. Uh, I have to pick uh, movies. Or music that are older than 18 years of age. Uh, we'll play a clip. And then uh, I think it's movies category tonight. A uh, segment called Don't uh, Pick Chris Hansen. Uh, remember from Catch the Predator. These uh, things have to be over the age of 18. Or uh, I'm not sure what happens. We'll figure that out. Uh, or I'll have it explained to me as we get closer to that. Hi, everyone. I am Jim Richards. You're listening to the lovely sounds that are the excitement of me talking. Uh, I've emailed myself, although it was earlier in the day, and (laughs) uh, it just says, uh, open with caution, sad email. So I might uh, be reading sad email within the hour. And uh, I was offered a movie opportunity that I'll explain to you guys a little bit later on. There were a couple of things that I wanted to, uh, what I wanted to begin the show with is something that I forgot, and uh, it's, it's basically this. Uh, I'm sick of going into restaurants. This might be pre-COVID more than it is um, uh, COVID times, but I've seen a couple of people uh, complain about it. And you go into like a small chain sandwich shop. I don't want to name any names, but I think if when I say small, I mean maybe the world's biggest sandwich chain. And whenever you go in there, maybe it's late at night, depending on how late the one around you is open. All of these places are like, oh, sorry, our uh, washroom is closed. I get it. No matter where you are, well, maybe not in some cities that you're listening to right now, but there might be a bad part of town where maybe uh, the local people who uh, have an addiction will go in and they'll overdose in a washroom. I know that uh, 25 years ago, I uh, got a phone call and the girl that I had been dating previously uh, had passed away. She overdosed in a washroom. So I get that that's why maybe these restaurants, the ones that I'm talking about are big chain restaurants because I remember a couple of times i would go into one burger shop that is uh, got a whole bunch of locations in toronto it was like two o'clock in the morning and i wanted a burger and i got a burger and i got a drink and then i asked if i could use the washroom because i didn't know if it was one of those hockey stick things where here's the key go and use it but they told me that it was broken went back another time and it was broken like a week or two weeks later and the thing's always broken clearly the washroom in here is not broken and i uh i got to the point where they gave me all my food And I said, I'm not paying for it unless you let me use the washroom. And they're like, it's broken. And I'm like, there's no freaking way that it's broken. I went back the next day during the day and they told me, uh, yeah, you can use the washroom. So it ain't broken. And too many places... And I get it, uh, people, especially the men's room. People, people are disgusting. Uh, somebody's got to clean it up. They probably don't want to clean it up. It, I don't want to clean it up either. It's a job that nobody wants. But whether it is uh, this burger chain that I'm thinking of or the biggest sandwich chain in the world, the washroom is always broken. It's never broken. And uh, if you have to work this shift, like if you're in a truck making deliveries right now or you're an Uber driver or you're any number of different professions, you guys expect me to go through all the professions. There's security guard. There's anyway, there's a lot of different professions. But you experience that probably more than I do. And it's garbage. And I would say, uh, make your transaction based on your use of the washroom. 
Sure, there's probably, like, I'm not even talking about the person who, because I always feel bad, and my, my friends think I'm ridiculous. I always feel bad about not even buying a Timbit and using the washroom. I always like to, I always, I will buy something. I know that sounds bad. Well, I'm just talking about paying customer, not being like, clearly I have paid. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. You guys know what that is? It's bangry. It's when you, I'm not like, this is real bangry, and the guy in the basement apartment below me isn't going to like it, but this is real bangry. I was just doing tap rave. Tap agree doesn't sound as good as bangry. Um, but uh, I know your washroom's not broken, and I get it. There's all sorts of ugly, you know, men are disgusting in the men's room. You have to clean up to it. Some people are real jerks and will actually intentionally make a mess of it. Another, the worst case scenario is somebody's died in your uh, washroom because they're doing drugs or something like that or having sex or any number of different things. Um, and uh, I just think that, I mean, does there, has there anybody had an experience like this? I don't want to open the phones and this is not a topic for me. It's more of a rant at one 633 because there is a topic that I do want to do. one 633 1010 uh, before we go uh, forward. Later on in the show, I'm just going to read a bunch of text messages that I don't think were for us. But they texted us at 71010. They were probably for someone else. I'll give you an example of a couple of them. Here's a texter. Uh, this is a Montreal area code. Are we allowed to go on the roof? <laughs> that came in three days ago at uh, 215. Are we allowed to go on the roof? Now, I have gone back to the lineup to see if we were talking about, hey, should you go on the, should you go on the roof? 872-1010. Or sorry, I gave the wrong number. 1855. We didn't do, hey, should you go on the roof? So these are just random. I'm calling this intexticated because I do think that these people may have been intexticated. Here are two other ones. I'm going to ask you one last time to call him Matt, and he's fine, thank you very much. And another one is, my boobs are too perky to pay that much for a car. I wish I knew more about that, but that's from Windsor, uh, and that's from Monday night. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was in here. I'm not sure. Uh, Tony, did David do a topic? Are your boobs perk too perky to pay for a car? I do not think he did that topic. No. Uh, so that's what we mean when we say intexticated some of the emails that we get. All right. So, uh, again, I didn't really want to do it as a phone in topic, this washroom thing for people who work overnight and you're told all the time that the, uh, that the washroom is always broken. Well, really, you're under really crappy management, no pun intended, if you can't get the washroom fixed. It's always broken at night, never broken during the day. Matt, uh, sorry, Neil, you have a similar experience? Neil? Hello? Hey, Neil, how are you, man? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. What I want to say, most of the people working nights are young people who are probably told by management, don't let them in. But they should have the common sense to know which people are going to be doing what you said and going to be respectful. Yes, I would agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's a couple who look like they're pretty randy and, you know, hanging off each other and you think that they're going to be in there for an hour who's kidding who uh five minutes having sex uh then yes uh your radar might be up but if i'm just a paying customer and i just bought i don't know it's like a a burger and fries and a drink at a at a place is going to run you 15 20 bucks and you're not going to allow me to use the washroom uh right. i think that's pretty awful and i i would always say okay uh take your food back or some garbage like that i wouldn't get violent or throw any food or anything like that you understand neil well, that's why you would let you, they should let you in the washroom, right? I agree. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate I it. All right. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. You know what? Uh, I, you know what Neil reminds me of? Neil, don't call me back and be angry. Neil reminds me of a study. Where the hell is it? Uh, that women love men who mumble. A new study found that women, new study found women find men more attractive if they mumble. Like he wasn't really mumbling, but his voice was very low. 
very monotone. Maybe he didn't want to wake anybody up, so I'm not calling him a mumbler. But ladies, are you really attracted to people who mumble? Because it reminds me of this scene from, uh, is it Family Guy? We now return to Tony Danza and Sylvester Stallone in what? Hey. 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 <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, so women love mumblers. Again, I'm not saying that Neil mumbled. I'm saying he was talking low. Maybe should I should I like be doing better with women by like just the whole show like this? Uh, ladies, do you love mumblers? One eight five five six three three ten ten. It's the Late Showgram with Jim Richards on the iHeartRadio Talk mm-hmm. Network. Uh, I don't know that I want to do a whole segment of just reading texts, but uh, we discovered earlier this week that a lot of people will accidentally text us, uh, and we're calling the segment. It's even not a segment. Maybe once a week, though, we'll go through, and I guess it's going to be uh, Thursday morning, we'll go through some of the text messages that we've received this past week. And I'm only talking about 10 of them, right? Or maybe... In some cases, uh, yeah, well, I've got like nine. And these are text messages that uh, I'm calling it intexticated that may have been, uh, well, clearly were not directed towards us. One person, this is from uh, Monday night, Tuesday morning, 115 from Hamilton want to meet in a parking lot and park side by side like cops and eat french fries and smoke (laughs) uh i don't know if anybody ever got that message they realized that they texted the wrong number um and another one which is this one is from this one is from niagara based on the area code I'll only come over if you don't take off my sunglasses for it. Don't know what that is either. But interesting, we get intexticated text messages uh, from uh, you guys. That was that segment. I will perhaps open the email that says sad day during the news segment. That is on the way. But first, and I've only allotted myself six minutes for this, which is not smart if you're in radio. Uh, You see a topic like this and you're like, man, that one at least, at least if this was a daytime topic, you'd go an hour with this one. And this we, I I Googled this. I saw this. I I thought of a, a friend said something to me and then I was like, is there a topic for that? And so we Googled it and we found it, found other examples because uh, a friend of mine said, you know what? They've never been called an N-word. And I'm like, first of all, you're white. Uh, and you shouldn't have been called an N-word. But they said, oh, no, but the people that I hang around with. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably a good thing. I don't know if that's a badge of honor. You're not supposed to have that happen. Same person, she says, uh, yeah, you know what? I've never been pregnant and uh i've never gone to jail it's like yeah you're not supposed to do those things i'm not sure that that's that big of a badge of honor but my question to you is if you've got a good one phone lines are open right now one 1010 what have you avoided what have you avoided your entire life tony can you think of something what you've av- avoided your entire life mine would be a cavity um in my mouth um i've never and i you know the good and the bad of that is that my teeth are so far apart again people say that when i smile it looks like my tongue is in jail that my teeth are so far apart i uh, there's no way that any food can get stuck between my teeth but do you have a good one like you've gone through your entire life and have never had this happen like everybody has something what is the thing that you've never been through or done i've never broken a bone ever broken a bone I broke a bone in uh, football. 
You can also, but you guys know what I was going to say. Uh, we did a topic once. Have you ever broken your penis? And uh, that was based on a horrific story that I heard from a female friend who had done that to her boyfriend. Um, and I tried to get her on the show, and she would not come on the show. Um, have you? Okay, text message from somebody named Larry. I've never been in a fight. I have been in fights. Uh, not proud of it because. Uh, it just turns into a lot of like dancing and threatening and you know friends are holding you back and all sorts of stuff i was defending i was drunk and defending the honor of my friend's girlfriend who i actually liked and uh that was like i don't know my i was a kid i was uh 10 19 20 uh but never been in a fight uh another texter from windsor says never been in a car accident so what is the thing that you've managed to your entire life avoid? Here is Tom. Tom? How you doing, Jim? Good, thank you very much. What's the thing that you have your entire life avoided? So I have avoided holding a gun, uh, which, which doesn't sound like the craziest thing. I'm sure lots of people have done that. But um, I, I lived in Israel for a year, uh, and I lived on a kibbutz. And so... Uh, heavy, heavy army presence all throughout Israel, but especially on a kibbutz. And they used to have all these uh, uh, Jewish youth groups come through our kibbutz, uh, and they'd always have a guard with them. And so once the, all the kids had gone to bed, they always used to come to our place, have a couple drinks, and they'd always have, you know, the machine guns and the Uzis and, and all this crazy stuff. And I had a buddy who always wanted to hold them. And so they, they'd take out the magazine and, and give it to him, right? Hey, go yeah. for it, hold it. And uh, and you know, they would always go to me. Hey, you want to hold it? And I was I, I like I didn't, I'm not necessarily against guns. I was just I'm not about to shoot anything. What do I got to hold it for, right? Yeah. And then I don't know. It just became kind of a thing for me. I figure, you know what? If I can get through the rest of my life, never have to hold a gun, I, I, that'd be cool. I'm I love cool. it. I'm good. Good stuff. I appreciate the, the phone call, Tom. I love yours. Uh, it's great. Uh, have I ever held a gun? I mean, not a not a shotgun shotgun. I mean. Uh, I don't want to tell that story of, uh, no, there was one summertime, my dad rented a cottage for the family and it didn't have, uh, mice. It had like, it had raccoons, it had squirrels, it had chickmunks. And so my dad boarded up so the raccoons couldn't get in, but the chickmunks were still getting in. So there were, this is a long time ago and it's not cool. My dad would, uh, go to the Canadian tire, get a pellet gun and spent one afternoon, just picking off uh it was terrible your kid crying like i'm five crying no nah, i was probably a little older than that i was probably like 25 crying daddy's killing all the chickmunks and he's burying them uh it was uh the highlight of the summer it was not so much uh, uh turning left that's somebody's avoid their entire life driving and turning left I know those people. They just keep on going right. They'll, what is that? Going right three times until you're going the direction that you want. Another texter says parallel parking. Avoided parallel parking. Um, this one reminds me. I'm getting screwed. Uh, I did jury duty, I think, two years ago. I got another request to do jury duty last year, and I told them, wait a second, I just did jury duty. And now I haven't... I just just reading this text message just reminds me that I still have to reply and tell them, I don't know, hey, I did this already within the last two years or whatever. I don't know. I might get screwed and have to do jury duty again. Another person says, uh, been stung by a bee. Another person says, kidney stones. I've never had any kidney stones either. And another person says, uh, a job. I'm not sure how you did that. But I do know people who have avoided life not having a job because of rich parents. So, I would say, Tony, that went well. I mean, not as many phone calls as one would want for segment, what have you avoid, avoided your entire life? But, uh, great topic. Uh, actually, Tony's. Maybe someone is trying to get avoided calling a radio station, and that's... That's why they're not calling right now. Yeah, could be a uh, thing that they've avoided their entire life, not phoning a late night talk show. I'm Jim Richards. It is the Late Night Show, Graham. Listen live and local to the Late Show, Graham with Jim Richards. Weeknights starting at midnight on the iHeartRadio Talk Network.